What's up guys, Andre here, and today I'd like to take a look at Vite. Vite is an opinionated web dev tool created by Avenue, the creator of Vue. The simplest way I like to explain Vite is that it is an alternative to Vue CLI. It also does not make use of Webpack to bundle your code and makes use of native ES module imports instead. This results in Vite being much faster. Now, Vue CLI is not slow by any means, but Vite is noticeably faster. Let's take a look at how to use it. So if you scroll down here on the GitHub page, you'll see installation instructions. So let's go ahead and npm init Vite app and then give it a name. Let's paste that in. Let's name it Vite example. Okay. Okay, so let's cd into it and run npm install and then npm run dev to run our dev server. So npm install. Okay, that's done. And I'm going to run npm run dev and this will run our dev server and you'll see how quick it is. It takes about, what, one second, maybe two, as opposed to running the dev server on a Vue CLI app, which takes maybe seven or eight seconds. We'll do a benchmark in a second. Actually, let me open this up in VS code. And then let's run our server again. Okay. So as you see, the app is running in localhost 3000 and here is the default app and out of the box, it supports hot module reloading and it's pretty much instantaneous as you save the file. So let me give you a quick demo. So the folder structure is pretty minimal. Everything is in source and we have an assets and components directory and the main app view and the main or the index CSS, the default CSS. So if you take a look at app, just importing this hello world component and that is in the components folder. Oh yeah. And by default, it is using view three, but after reading the issues, I think there are plans to support view two in the future. So let's go ahead and go into this hello world view and ignore the squiggly. It's cause view three doesn't require a root div. So the view ter extension is complaining here, but this should still work. So let me do this, do this. This message is coming from the prop. So it should be an app view right here. So let's go ahead and change it. And you'll see, as I save just a few milliseconds before you see the updates in the browser. So again, not to say view CLI three was slow, but this is much quicker. So let's take a look at a view CLI three app. So let's take a look at this view composition API example, which I have a video on as well. And let's take a look at the dev server startup time. So I won't edit this out and we can see how long it takes. So definitely much slower than using Vite. So that took what about 10 seconds, maybe. And here is our app. And I've opened up the code in VS code and let's see how long it takes for the hot module replacement. So it's pretty quick here too, as well. So if I save it, that took about a second. Let's see. Yeah, about a second. Whereas in Vite, it takes just a few milliseconds. And I've also experienced slowdowns in hot module replacement when the app is much bigger or even when the file is much bigger. So in terms of what you can do with a view app built with Vite, pretty much anything you're used to. So let's take a look at some examples. So let's take a look at using SAS. So we just have to add SAS here and I can stop this because it's a quick startup time. So I'll just do NPM install minus D SAS. Okay. And boot up our server again. And that should work. So if I go into the hello world component, well, let's make a new one actually. Let's say another dot view and let's put it underneath our hello world component right here. Let me move that, let's say another, close that out. Let's import it. And let's add it to our components key. Let me open this up again so you can see how fast it is. So I'm going to save. 
and obviously nothing's going to show because I didn't make anything in the template. So let's do another component. And this should render quickly as I save. And there it is. And we wanted to test out SAS. So let me make another element here so I can make use of nesting. So let's do style. And to use SAS within view, you can either import the file directly or you can use this style tag and do lang equals scss. And we can just do div and then nest the span here. Let's say background green or something. Cool. Now, if you want to make use of Tailwind CSS, that works great as well. As you see, there's support for post CSS. So let's go ahead and install Tailwind. So let's go ahead and npm install it. Okay. And let's make a new CSS file here. So I'm just going to make a new one here next to index. So that would be in source, say main CSS. Let's paste this in. Okay. And let's create a tailwind config. Okay, and let's import that main CSS in here. Or I believe it's being imported in the main JS. Yeah, so we can do that as well. So main CSS. Or we can just replace the index, but I'll just leave it like this. And that should do it. Let's run our dev server again. Okay, and let's see if this works. Oh yeah, I forgot to make it work with post CSS. So as you see, if you just add a post CSS.config.js file and make use of Tailwind in there, that should work. So let's add that file. So let's say post CSS.config.js and let's grab the installation here. So right here, post CSS config.js and just paste this in. And we might have to restart our dev server. Yeah, let's restart our dev server. And as you see, our page changed and that means Tailwind is installed. So let's go back to our another component and let's just verify that it does work. And we'll get rid of this style since we're not using SAS anymore. And let's just say class equals BG blue 500 text white. Hello from Vite. And it does work. And as you see, it was really quick to reload. Now it should also work, hopefully, when you add some stuff to your CSS file. So let's just display none here. Okay, so that did work. And it did reload automatically. So let's bring that back. However, I believe I've read that it doesn't hop module reload for changes in your Tailwind config. So let's go into our Tailwind config and let's add a key for spacing. But it still works if you just reload the page manually. And let's add a new width that's not in the default spacing scale. So let's say 80. And 80 is 20 rems. Okay. And I'm not going to save that yet. Let's just make use of that first here and say, so let me show you a width that does work so you can see the width change. Okay. But 80 does not work. So it goes back to full width. So let me save this and as you see, the page does not reload, but if I manually refresh, this should still work. And it does cool. So one more quick tip when using Tailwind with Vite or any JS application, uh, you got this from Adam Weathen. You can see that you can just actually import the Tailwind CSS file directly. So if you're not making use of any custom CSS in here, then it's probably better to just do it like this. 
So let's see if this works. So back to our main.js and let's just replace this with the tailwind directory directly tailwind.css. Okay, and let's see if this still works. And it does, cool. And we no longer need this file. And one more thing I want to show you, funny enough, it actually supports React as well. So let's quickly do that so you can see how the React scaffolded code looks. So let's copy this. Let's npm init and let's give it a name of Vite React example. Okay, let's go into that. It's npm install. Let's open this up in VS Code. And let's npm run dev again to run our dev server. And there is our app. Let's see how it looks. There's the React logo. And let's take a look at the scaffolded code. Same thing or same format as it is with Vue, but now it's React. And the hot module replacement is very quick as well. So again, we have our main entry point right here. We have a app JSX component and we have a default CSS file. Actually, there's two. There's an app CSS and an index CSS. So let's take a look at this. Take a look at the hot module replacement and how fast it is. Hello, Vite plus React, pretty quick. And from here, you can do whatever you want. So one more thing I want to point out is there is a project that makes use of Vite within ViewPress called VitePress. So if you're making use of ViewPress, definitely check this out as well. Again, same advantages as normal Vite, faster cold start for the dev server and faster hot module replacement. Now, moving forward for me personally, I think I'm going to be making use of Vite more often than Vue CLI. Most of the projects I make are just demo projects where I'm just tinkering around and trying something out. And as you saw, Vite is much quicker for things like that. Now, if I were to build a production app, maybe for a client or for myself, then I would still make use of Vue CLI because it has more features and probably has less bugs because it's been out for much longer. Okay, so one more thing I forgot to show you was building your app for production. So like I said earlier, Vite does not make use of Webpack. So when you need to build your app for production, it makes use of Rollup. And you can pass any options you want to it, but in this demo, I'll just show you the default. So if you look at our package JSON file, you'll see there is a build command here. So we can run that. Let's do npm run build. And this will make a dist folder and make your assets available. And you can just throw this up on a server and that should work. And again, pretty quick. And if you look at our folder here, you'll see this new dist folder and everything inside here, you can throw up on a static server. So yeah, that's all I have to show you about Vite. Still in very early stages, so it can only improve from here, but I already like what I see and will be making heavy use of it from now on. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks, bye.